Hi all, welcome and uh, thanks for joining. Uh, we'll give up a minute for others to join and we'll kick start soon. You were, you were curious, um, Jackie, about the preference in time of day for folks. Yeah. Um, is it is it is it good for everyone? Is is anybody in the pub? <laughs> I suppose as directed to the audience, we are having a conversation about whether <laughs> seven o'clock in the evening or breakfast meeting or lunchtime really suits you. So please engage in the chat and tell us if there's a preference for when you'd like your community or practice. OK, so I think probably we'll get started while people uh, join the session. Warm welcome to you all to yet another webinar. Uh, this webinar is sponsored by Auxilium as part of a community of practice. I'm sure you already attended many webinars that are arranged under the PMO community of practice. This is also one of those uh, webinars. My name is Santosh Joshi, director of events and I'll be your host today. Today's webinar is an interesting topic. It addresses all our concerns. Do I have to keep upselling my PMO to take it forwards? Is there any better way? So while attending this webinar, uh, keep in mind what you can take it from this webinar so that you can apply that in your real projects. What you can expect from this webinar? Is there any better way for your PMO to deliver greater benefit? Is there any way to connect strategy to the delivery and back? So think of these questions while you attend the webinar. You are free to uh, put your questions uh, to the speakers in the chat box so that it gets picked up and uh, your question will be answered. Let us go to the, uh, the speaker introduction. Uh, sorry, uh, we'll, yeah. So uh, this is my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Jackie Glenn. Jackie Glenn, you all know already, right? She was the past president of a PMI Ireland chapter. She has the master's degree in project management, more than 25 years of experience. Currently, a technology solutions director at Optum. She previously worked as a director of group strategic initiatives at UGD, UDG Healthcare and uh, head of portfolio management office too. Member of faculty and lectures with the uh, Institute of Project Management and also a member of judge, judging committee, the PMI, PMO Global Awards. She is executive board member of PMO GA Healthcare Strategic Group. Jackie, it is our pleasure to have you today with us to uh, to run this uh, the session. Uh, request you to introduce the speakers, please. Thank you very much, and you're all very welcome. Thank you, Santosh. Really appreciate that. You're all very welcome to what is effectively our fifth PMO community practice. So just to remind everybody, we launched this December last year. And um, when I exited my past president post, I'm still on the board as past president. I took up the role of head of PMO community practice. And my commitment to our members is that we will, and, and our sponsors, Auxilian, is that we will deliver six specific PMO community practice webinars throughout the year along with all the other good webinars that we do with our other community practices and the general wider PM population. What we're trying to do is set up a community, encourage a community of sharing and I'm delighted to have David Dunning back again. I think he with the other David did a great uh, session on uh, your strategic wishes, my delivery of demand before summer and he's joined by Alex Shapley and here That's today great. we're going to talk we're going to talk about um, upselling your PMO which I think any Anybody who's in the PMO space has constantly got that kind of thing in their head about how to keep relevant, 
and we all know the stats associated with PMO, you don't keep relevant, then you just, just get cycled out the door and cycled back in again a couple of years ago and a couple of years later and people think you may be relevant again. I'm particularly interested in this session today and the great conversation we're going to have by something that David and Alex call the big governance, but I let them reveal what that is today, okay? Um, delighted to have you on board, gentlemen. You're very welcome to our PMO community of practice. I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk about our national awards before I hand over um, the slides to David to direct us on our conversation this evening. As you're well aware, the uh, PMI, uh, PMI chapter has run the national PMI National Awards for about five years now. Last year, we actually ran a digital awards after missing the previous year due to COVID. We're delighted that this year we're back um, uh, at a black tie event on the 24th of November um, with our sponsors, PwC. So this is to let all of you guys know okay. that submissions have to be done by the 26th of September. And because you are our PMI, community, you have a great opportunity to recognise your PMOs, mm. the great projects you do in your organisation, or even nominate someone from your organisation for the coveted National Project Professional Award. I encourage all of you to take part because if you do and you win the PMO of the Year Award or even a finalist, you can contribute to the body of knowledge that we have shared this year as part of the PMO community of practice. If you remember, we kickstarted with research that was done in the four finalists last year to share the state of PMOs in Ireland specifically. And then that's something we'd like to keep on going. So it'll give you an opportunity to give back within the, your own community. And remember that if you do become finalists, then you get to, uh, to attend that nice black tie awards dinner in the PwC executive offices on the 24th of November, which I would highly recommend. It's a great evening. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to David and Alex, and I'm really looking forward to the conversation this evening. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank, thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Santosh. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I hope everyone's sitting comfortably. Um, uh, do I have to keep up selling my PMO to take it forwards? Interesting question. Um, we're going to be quick. We're going to go through this rapidly. I believe this is being recorded so you can play it at a, at a slower pace afterwards. Um, so we'll get through the material quickly, hopefully time for questions. Um, we're going to cover an, a number of areas. Um, so why are we presenting? Why do we think this is an important uh, thought set to share with people? We'll introduce you to this concept of business integrated governance. Uh, and and the co uh, core P3M Data Club, which is the uh, community interest company that's uh, that's developed that, and and talk about how it's relevant to uh, upselling your PMO, or even taking a different approach altogether. And um, we'll talk about that different approach, and, and we call it business support. So we're not meaning to demean the the the, the acronym uh, PMO, but business support is is what we call the the uh, function which helps business integrated governance to work. And, and how does that relate to what I do in a PMO now or possibly in the future? And we'll just briefly chat over where do I start? If I like those ideas, how, how do I even get that going? Um, later in the presentation, we're going to uh, ask you to fill out a little poll. Um, if some of you may have done this before, um, you just on, on your on your handheld device or computer or whatever, um, just simply go to slido.com. It'll ask you for a for an event code, which is there. It's the one one three nine four six one, and uh, you'll be invited to to uh, ask us answer a question in a small number of words, and uh, we'll see what people have a think uh, about um, what what the uh, issues to do with growth in their PMO possibly are, and we'll we'll cover that a bit later. So I think. Um, and uh, Alex and me are going to double act this. So I think I think the next uh, piece is possibly Alex. Let's see, shall we? Yes, it is, oh, Alex. Thank you, David. So why are we presenting? Well, we think what we've developed will be of interest to people and will aid a number of organisations in how they move forward. We specifically think it will help people in the PMO world. So what do we mean by PMO? They're all different. It's a really ambiguous term. What well, some PMOs do, other PMOs don't. My experience is I go into manage a PMO or refresh a PMO or set one up. We actually define what this PMO will do. And you talk to the board of directors and you say, do you want assurance? Well, maybe. Do you want reporting? Could be. Everybody has different expectations of what their PMO will do. 
And most PMOs are very different in what they actually do. Are they portfolio, program, project, corporate, joint venture? Is it departmental? So what do we mean by PMOs? They're all different. So Axelos and PMO Learning have come up with things that could or should or maybe in your PMOs. 22 standard services, decision support, center of excellence, et cetera, et cetera. We're all, I expect, very, very familiar with all of these. So what is big doing differently? So, oh yeah, and it's a given. APM says it, PMI says it, IPMA masters degree theses say it, effective support contributes to project success and avoidance of failure. So it has to be a good thing. Could it be better? We will talk about that. So we're talking today about business support, which you will recognize lots of parts of business support from working in PMOs or working with PMOs, but other things might look slightly differently. So wonderful. So all these different parts of organizations all have what we call business support areas, center of excellence, portfolio office, PSO down to a specific project, people working in business planning in accounting and treasury all have the support requirements and usually support resources working for them, but they're generally not joined up. In fact, generally, I would say almost always not completely joined up. So who's doing what? Where are they doing it? Do you have duplication, bureaucracy, inefficiency? Is each different team or resource inventing the wheel? By parochialism reigning, we mean people saying, I must do it my way. I don't care how the rest of the organization is doing it. I don't care if what I'm doing aligns with the rest of the organization. So in most organizations, you have all these business support activities. They're not effective because they're not joined up. So when we look at that picture, are you singing, oh, yes, my business is well supported? Or are you thinking, there's more we can do to support the delivery of strategy. David, thank you. <clears throat> now, oh, my read's coming in. So my experience is we realize that there's far more a PMO can do. There's way more areas that a PMO can add value. But what challenges do we have to growing our PMO? Well, the biggest one that I've come across is people don't understand the value that PMOs add. In fact, they often don't really understand what PMOs do at all and what the prioritization is. They don't really get accountability. They certainly don't within project management or often don't within project management. Your PMO could do lots. Directors screen for things, but you don't have the staffing level to supply what, what they need. I'm just going to whiz. I think everybody understands these growth challenges. Please look at slido.com. Put in the number and start saying, what are the challenges for your PMO? Whether you work in a PMO, you manage a PMO, or you work with a PMO. Low understanding of value out of a PMO. I completely agree with that. I've worked across multiple industries and cultures, and that is absolutely common across almost every business I've worked in. So should we just repeat the same message, do the same stuff, or is there something we can do better? We believe that with big, you can increase your value add. And I would say not just increase your value add, increase the perception of value add. People know that you're adding value. Oh, I believe this is the magic external slide from Slido where we're just about to look at the interesting words and phrases mm -hmm. you're popping in. And I'd just like you to know, when we demoed it, it works seamlessly. <laughs> it works faster, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is this because nobody has voted yet? No, we have some. I can see them. And for the avoidance of doubt, David, not me you're, controlling David, the you're technology. On, um, use. Yep, so uh, Slido's just having a think, but for expedience, I think I can show you in a web page. So let me just go and have a look at the web page. Ah, oh, there she blows. There she goes. Oh, crikey. Um, fantastic. I'll just get that on screen and Slido's gone off the page. Um, buying from C, um, C executives, C-suite buying, organisation structure, communication. Uh, yep. Uh, perceived as low value add, undervalued, lack of sponsorship, um, uh, value understanding, strategy planning. Um, a lot, yeah, re resourcing it. It feels to me, I don't know about your, what you're thinking, Alex, there's a, a lot in there about um, appreciation from the rest of the business as to what a PMO does do or can do. That buying from C executives um, is an interesting one. I've worked in a number of very well-known organizations, um, maybe globally famous, but not actually that large, just maybe a, up to 5,000 staff members. And they have they had previously got rid of their PMO because they could not understand the value. And then a couple of years down the line, they desperately realized that they needed a PMO. Just because there are some incredibly important cogs in the middle of your engine, and you don't know what they do, <laughs> it doesn't mean that you should take them out of the engine because everything will grind to a halt or, or perform very poorly. What I would say is interesting from what everybody's written here is that this is the type of thing that we first came up with when we started doing big. And where we've done straw polls before, this is the type of thing and presentations is that absolutely common so pmi ireland is saying what all the other presentations we've done are saying so this is a common issue for pmos would you agree with that david yes and, and furthermore um, i'll i'll summarize this and in in the slides that we share later i'll i'll put these results in so if people want to keep uh, adding comments uh, the poll list will remain open and i'll, I'll summarize them and, and play them back um but yeah, um, it's it's uh, lo lots of reasons why, lots of, lots of growth challenges. Um, shall we uh, move on? Yeah. <clears throat> Back to me. Um, so, what is big? What is business integrated governance, and how on earth can can this uh, help in any of these areas? Um, well, there are a number of perspectives of business integrated governance. One of the perspectives is from a strategy delivery perspective. So here's a little picture. I um, don't know if it makes sense. It's of an organisation that's listening to its opportunities, threats, imperatives and goals. It's got a, a board, a, a, a set of executive directors that are, that are listening to the outside world and to escalations from within and are responding to the challenges and goals that, that are being set. And that through a strategic process typically um, breaks down into the setting of objectives, the setting of business as usual targets and innovation challenges where the objective or target isn't clear yet, but you know you've got to do something. And um, there's there's a challenge then um, to get that into the business. And and this this is um, based on uh, a conversation I had with the CEO of an online uh, supermarket chain, and his perspective was perhaps unfairly, but his perspective was as a CEO that that uh, they've got bright sparks in, in the board, they've, they've got support to 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 develop strategy and think as to what needs to be done by when. But then it's kind of magic somehow happens. The connection from from that expectation into the business uh, is, is supported by um, that he used the word faith in general managers and the project delivery community community. And he said then in many times we, we all pray and hope. We, we, we're not quite sure what's going to come back. And um, this, the supermarket uh, analogy was that stuff appears, they, they set objectives, targets and challenges, stuff gets produced, um, outputs um, get uh, uh, surface and materialise, but um, it's not really clear how that really supports and drives the objectives, targets and challenges that, that the business has. 
And uh, the, the statistic is, and you can Google this, that um, basically um, with respect to strategic objectives, 10% um, of organizations, only 10% of organizations achieve more than two thirds of their strategic objectives. 54% achieve less than 50%. So this is what this is what you can find in Google and search in all kinds of studies um, that you'll find lots of uh, reputable reports. We're not good at it. Um, so so, it, so um, this isn't this isn't hocus pocus. This isn't uh, fake news. This is this is real. Um, so should we be asking ourselves how do we conduct the magic better? And let me pull, let me leave that thought with you for a moment. So. Um, Looking at uh, some thinking that's come out of this organization, PMI, you might have heard of it. Um, uh, a mature PS, uh, a mature PMO. Um, I saw this 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 output as a as a perhaps a way to orchestrate the magic better. That that mm -hmm. there are there are people in 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 the PMI that that recognise uh, that uh, top organisations, successful organisations, have have really mature and effective PMOs. And some extracts from the report. Uh, I'll pick out there are a few there, but I'll pick off a couple and we'll repeat them through the session. Um, a, a key point here, um, organizations have a strong governance framework contributing to the development of strategy. The other one there, KPIs and initiatives are fully aligned with the wider organization's strategic and change goals. So those, those are key to me. Those are very key points that we'll 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 dig into a bit further. Um, but we, we're starting to present that um, we need someone to orchestrate this connection of strategy to, deliver, to delivery and perhaps uh, a, a, a PMO or a mature PMO can, can take a part uh, in that process. So then, um, what is business integrated governance? Business integrated governance, uh, it's a model. Um, it's produced by the Core P3M Data Club. It's free, it's available. Um, there's some links there to to uh, the club website and to uh, a version of it that's published through Praxis. It's a model, and I'll just read this. It's a model that explains how to connect strategic drivers, the business as usual organization, those that are focusing on managing products, and those that are implementing change. Um, the the goal is to to recognize that there are lots of cogs turning in an organization. Um, but who who exactly is is trying to get those cogs to uh, turn in in synchronous so the gears don't grind and disintegrate? It enables information centric decisions across the enterprise, enabling clear accountability. The key phrase there is information information centric. If we don't have good, timely, reliable, um, integrated, and traceable information, then how can we be accountable and make decisions and and um, and, and take things forwards? So that's the, the, the concept um, at a high level of, of what business integrated governance is. Um, the building blocks, well, there, there are, there are uh, we, there's a lot, clearly there are lots of lots of little pieces and components, but we try to summarize it and enable people to visualize it by by having asking people to appreciate that there needs to be a clear organization structure. If, you, if your organization isn't clear and, and roles and responsibilities understood, then operating governance within that's going to be hard. There needs to be clear process, tools and operation of a governance framework, uh, not just the expectation that governance somehow will magically happen. You need to be um, Op operated and orchestrated. To underpin that that governance, we need uh, a traceable and quality information sources from wherever that information comes, and an information capability that lets us digest, process, and 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 and, and use the information um, for for our points of accountability throughout the business. So we have an organisation structure, an effective governance framework, the information infrastructure to enable that to to work. We have uh, clear points of accountability and operation of accountability, uh, acceptance of empowerment and accountability within within an organization's culture, and that that uh, the, the level of of uh, success on that is is a point for discussion in some organizations. Uh, but then we move on to the the I guess what people recognise here that we're, we're saying that we need clear and effective integrated business support without. Um, somebody to orchestrate and organize and facilitate and drive and make this happen and um, we're not we're not sure things um 
will do that. If you if you're part of a football team and there's no no team manager who 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 organises the pitches, who 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 makes who makes the calls on who comes on and off, it it's just not going to work. We need we need support to make that happen. And um, in in conjunction with support and separated from support. Uh, clear assurance to make sure, keep us honest and make sure we're doing things the right things the right way. And um, the last last component on there is is clear and effective leadership sponsorship for the origination and setup of 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 this this approach and sustainment of it whilst we continue to to derive benefits from it. And there's a little YouTube video there um, that, that kind of explains this a, a little bit more slowly. And more comprehensively perhaps um, if, if you'd like to uh, click on that um, after the show. So we've got the, the 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 concept it's it's to help the cogs work together there are components that that we need to have in place to enable it to happen and business support clearly is is one of those key components. So business support how is this different then from what we do in say a PMO bearing in mind what we said earlier on about PMOs all being different and and uh, no one PMO being the same as another well um the the, the one of the main concepts in in big is that we're looking after support for for activity that runs the organization and um activity that changes the organization and the the point we we uh, took earlier off the the PMI uh, mature uh, PMO slide was that we have a strong governance framework contributing to the development strategy. So we need um, support that's going to help us to not only balance run and change, but we need support to enable us to get from the, the drivers that, that are hitting us from external sources, changes to our market position, uh, regulatory uh, banana skins were thrown at us, customer changes, legislation, what the owners want, all of these factors, I guess, are what uh, we would form and make sense of and perhaps uh, know, uh, know these as opportunities, threats, imperatives and goals. Uh, all pretty basic stuff here. And then our strategic process will catch and make sense of those external drivers, evaluate what's important and what we need to respond to and formulate strategy. So we'll formulate, um, we'll understand our purpose, we'll understand the vision as to how we're going to achieve that purpose, we'll understand what steps we've got to take um, to, to get there. And we'll decompose that down into the objectives, targets and challenges that are, that are actionable, that we can hand over to, to management teams within the business who are either running our business as usual work streams, our value streams and our product development perhaps, and our change portfolio. The, 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 the activity that uh, that takes us forward strategically and changes the business. And looking at uh, how PMOs can contribute to this, um, well, it, it may be the case that uh, PMOs a lot of the time are, are based in change the organisation. And I guess you don't have a PMO in, in run the organisation because project, I guess, technically isn't run um, unless you kind of do business that is run by projects, I guess. But we need, we're looking here to aggregate support for the for the whole organisation. And we're looking to get support to uh, to assist and help us beyond um, helping within the change portfolio or the product portfolio or the BAU portfolio and to try and connect up and, and support um, th this, this strategic process to happen. And it's our view that that, um, that there are many skills and, and capabilities within PMOs that lend themselves to application at this level, as well as at the, the project and programme level. It was, would anyone disagree with that suggestion? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, um, OK, so then what, what is business support? It's in, it's an it's a value level um, above perhaps what a what a project or programme office provides presently. And and is its its customer is is a slightly higher level within the organisation, but it cascades down into the projects and program delivery that that enable the strategy to get delivered. Just taking this a step further, so um, we 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 see that uh, from what Alex has said that there's perhaps possibility to rationalise some of the the support services that we have in our business. Lots of di different pots of support maybe we can pull that together 
Um, we've we've talked about um, the the greater value, the connecting of strategy delivery. We've talked about the, the need perhaps to to work across and support run and change. Um, and all of these things are, are possible if we plug into our organization structure um, more than just a project support office, a, a support function and call it business support that, that can in, that can provide um, a platform, a backbone for providing support, whatever we call it in uh, project support, program support, um, product development support, um, planning support, strategy support, whatever, and, and operate that holistically. And um, taking that a step further still, um, why, why would we need this? Um, we, we might um, appreciate that uh, we'll be giving uh, some strategic objectives and targets into individual business areas. And our engineering directors might be more than happy to uh, to uh, run run their projects uh, and their business as usual um, un underneath um, their own uh, uh, accountability networks. But um, much of the strategic stuff that we do is cross business. It's multi department. Um, accountability doesn't necessarily land with um, a particular uh, function head. It, it can be to a sponsor that perhaps is delivering across multiple business units. And how do we get if 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 our organization structure isn't the best way to to visualize then how our accountability is broken down? We need another way to be able to see what that is. So so in in what we look at with with big is to appreciate the organization structure, but we also want to superimpose into that model where accountabilities lie for stuff that goes cross business that doesn't necessarily uh, feed into one area or another. We visualize it with a map of accountabilities. So we have a main board that may have a subordinate change group that perhaps um, delegates to a to a portfolio for change that has projects and programs. And this this little logical model here just is kind of illustrating that that if we can map out and understand the network of accountabilities, perhaps we can start to uh, make it all work together and, and be consistent. And of course, um, the, 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 the thing that holds all this together is business support. Business support is, is the corset that, that can hold this all together. Um, business and support and, and assurance and the other, other functions, I guess, can fit around this model and, and provide assistance to not just projects and programs, but to all of those different points of accountability. I've just mentioned whether they're project related, work stream related, product development related. Um, to, to us, these, these accountability nodes, as we call them, they're just simply points of accountability. They may be uh, continuous delivery organizations or they may be, may be finite like projects. But if we, if we break um, what we're looking to achieve into points of accountability and map it, then perhaps we can start to, to manage our uh, accountability more effectively. So there's a few few meaty concepts in in that little passage of presentation. Um, so Alex, I think I'm handing over you now to uh, to elaborate on what we mean by this um, this accountability note thing. It's all going to be nice and simple now because mm -hmm. I'm speaking. So if you think about it, you have a board of directors at the top of your organisation. You have departmental meetings. It might be monthly, quarterly that they manage the departments. You have project boards, program boards, portfolio boards. Well, the common thing is that these are accountability nodes. They are accountable for doing certain things. Your engineering department monthly meeting is accountable for managing the engineering department. Your project board meeting, which might be monthly, fortnightly, event driven, is accountable for managing that particular project. So all accountability nodes, whether it's run or change, however high up in the organization or lower down, all have commonalities. So we went, they will all have inputs. At a minimum, they will have a mandate from their, let's say, from the portfolio. They will be getting performance information. What are the monthly KPIs? Any other BAI? Did those nasty people from assurance come along and give them a kicking or a pat on the head? Internal assurance, external assurance. These are all inputs that you're going to have to your management meeting. 
and then we're going to have our objectives targets and challenges we're going to have things escalated to us and then this management meeting or whatever you want to call it program board assesses all of these inputs and i'm not saying that these are the only inputs there will be often many other things and then at a minimum it should output should is the key word here what are your escalations or are you transferring things your assigned actions and decisions are you changing or refreshing or re refreshing mandates any other communication that has to go out so our concept within big is that at a minimum every accountability node eg every accountability board from the plc board of directors down will at a minimum have the same inputs and outputs and steer so if they all have as a minimum all of those things oh thank you objectives targets challenges opportunities threats imperatives goals i always get them mixed up if they all have at a minimum the same standard inputs and outputs then we can track them this is key mis we know for example what these outputs were what date who made the decision did somebody say i voted against this because of x y and z but we are tracking our not management information as in kpis but the decisions and the drivers and this is absolutely key to how big operates and it is it can be put into any organization you could put it into an organization tomorrow because i've worked i, I mainly do recovery we didn't do our normal intro blurb but i recover project programs portfolios that's what i do and you you come across program boards and project boards and portfolio boards and they ignore certain inputs because they don't want to see them and they don't make the outputs that they should because they don't want to make a decision they don't want somebody to see where they've messed up etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think from my experience this is key and it's key to big so i've probably waffled on a bit there but so how does it all work integrated cadence oh my god what does that mean what it's saying is cadence frequency so you might have monthly reporting as a standard so if you have monthly reporting as a standard everybody reports monthly before your program can do its updates its monthly reporting it would need to have the project's monthly updates before. So there's a fundamental logic. At the portfolio level, they can't do their monthly reporting until they've had the programs reporting, which is dependent on the project reporting. So scheduling the governance and the reporting, and this can include things like connecting the diaries of senior people. You need the big cheeses in the same room at the same time so that you can do your management, do your governance. At a lower level, it's about enabling teams to fit in with local processes. Then what do we mean by the bottom one? Configure data integration tooling to gather, validate, and process data. That's a mouthful. What it means is all your different systems, which you put your data into, it could be your project server, it could be your ERP system, it could be something else. Is the data getting gathered when it should do? Are we getting our inputs and outputs from the accountability nodes? Business support does all of this. Your governance agendas won't work without somebody, e.g. business support, making sure that every accountability node has its inputs. And it won't work unless those accountability nodes, the management meetings, have their outputs, and those outputs are communicated to the people who need to see them. Um, this is just a little diagram to show that functional logic we were saying before. It's the arrows aren't massive, so you might have to squint at the screen. So your project update, you can see an arrow going up to your program update because the program can't update till it knows the status of its projects. 
then from the program we go up to the transformation portfolio review and update well that's a mouthful and and then again from that up you will have a corporate portfolio review so it's logical if you don't know what the subordinates have done you can't report on everything that you're doing and therefore the people who are above you you have to report to them so that they can then assimilate all the data and or aggregate it whatever the term is and then send it out so it's just a simple logic but somebody needs to set this up somebody needs to be the cog that makes it happen and if you have the right technology it's incredibly simple if you have the right will to govern without the technology it's still very doable but it often isn't done very well and the more accountability nodes you have the complexity sort of goes up exponentially and we will show that in if not the next slide very shortly yay <clears throat> again apologies for how small it is if you look at the diagram on the top that's how for 30 odd years um, in my career everybody's been reporting to each other we're doing program packs we're doing minutes we're doing huge spreadsheet packs and we're sending them all to each other and hr is saying well you say you sent me this but i spoke to fred in finance and he told me it's something different it's like oh i'm terribly sorry jackie i sent you version 2.1 <laughs> but santosh got version 2.12 it's horrible i'm sure that we've all been there whether it's pmo role operational management role project or program management role it's a nightmare and as a pm it takes up so much of my time and even though i try and delegate it maybe to a program support office it takes up lots of their time when i really want them to be doing something that adds value to the program i'm not saying that doesn't add value but you know making sure we progress and achieve our objectives so what's the little diagram underneath well, if you have a common data repository, common management information, so what we were saying about accountability nodes, common inputs for every accountability node, and common outputs that we can record in an MIS system. And then there's some clever integrated framework around it. That's all techie stuff David can tell you about. Then everybody sees the same data at the same time. You just put a date stamp on it and say, at this date, this was the data, this is what is being reported on. In terms of efficiency and effectiveness, that's huge. In terms of everybody singing off the same hymn sheet, which is a core component, principle, whatever you want to call it, of big, everybody sees the same data, real data at the right time and this very clever integrated framework techie stuff can also automatically send everybody the same data at the right time but you, it won't send everybody everything you get the data that is pertinent when you need it the days of board directors being given 85 page spreadsheet packs it, it shouldn't happen but i'm sure it still does top right um golden line of sight uh this is a key is it a principle outcome whatever component of big it means that you can drill down and you can drill down sideways so if you think of most organizations at the moment they're siloed a board erp systems can help you drill down but normally you can just drill down on each silo you're looking at something you're saying this business department isn't hitting its kpis why it doesn't have enough resources so you can then look sideways where where have its resources gone because it was doing fine before oh a number of their key engineers have been borrowed for this strategic program uh, a number of their key key support staff have been borrowed for this customer project that's gone wrong so you can see all the data and it's not just that the MIS is there because we've had some very complex MIS systems over my career. In my initial career, people tried to do it. The technology wasn't there. Nowadays, 
the technology is there to hold all of the MIS, but it's impenetrable. It's like going into a library and there's no index cards and there's very little written on the spine of each book. So the golden line of sight is this concept that all MIS is joined up. You can search up and down, left to right. I have gone on a bit about that, but um, to me, it's always been one of the most important parts of, of BIG. Do I need to do the KPI bit? Yeah, so... so um... So we've talked about um, the need to get the, the wheels to turn. We've talked about components uh, to enable it to happen. We've talked about business support as the um, as the facilitator to connect up all our points of accountability. We've talked about the need to move away from information send to information share. And I just wanted to remind everyone that that um, that capability that Alex was referring to that information capability. It exists in organizations, but for some reason, we're not always applying it to the connection of strategy to, to delivery. And if we think about uh, this, this, this little model here, we, we, we're, we're talking about um, enabling us to connect up all, all the systems that we need that are sources of the information that we have around strategy to delivery and connecting it to a, to a, 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 prof, a professional tool set that, that gathers it, validates it, quality checks it with some basic rules and then makes it available to us <clears throat> for each of us um, to to extract and, and report upon for, for the needs that we have. So the, the, the idea is connect, connect the tools, gather the data, ensure its validity, make it available, use it commonly as opposed to send it this way and everywhere. And the, the kind of um, tool sets that we're talking about here are well, we might need some kind of KPI or KRI, key results indicators, to enable us to, to visualize what's happening, uh, solutions to help us manage our work, um, planning tools, project management tools, whatever, objectives and key results tools to enable us to cascade the objectives down through organizations and be able to align key indicators to show that we're achieving those results. Um, ability to, to share risk, issues, actions, dependencies uh, and decisions. Um, wouldn't it be nice if we had all the actions for every meeting in one place? All the decisions that, that fall upon me to implement in one place? Um, or we could just bury it in meeting minutes and have me try to extract them once every month for uh, for, for a Thursday afternoon. I, I would prefer to spend watching my kids play, play rugby. Um, so whatever it is, the technology exists. You choose whichever flavor you like. But but in many of your organizations, I'm sure this this capability exists. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be Microsoft, but but uh, this 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 capability is there. I was in a finance company the other week where they had lots of this capability, but they'd, apl they'd applied it to financial management, but had no application of it whatsoever to to strategy delivery delivery or governance. So I think it's not just the, it's not a problem here of trying to find and justify this tech. It's applying it the right way to 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 our problems. Um, so again, just moving over to Alex, how how does business support differ? Well, we were saying that business support is different from a lot of little support things because business support is across a whole organization. So if we look at all the different people signs, we're saying all these different parts of the organization have support functions, but they're all local. They're not singing off the same hymn sheet. Well, they, they never have been in any organization I've seen, but it would be useful if they were singing off a more aligned hymn sheet, because they've all got kind of common skills, and it would also be nice for them if they had a, a way that they could develop their career and move up and down and get promoted using those common skills. So what we're saying is business support should be one single cross-functional department. And, oh, so we have a single department, line management of support people, and it's and we just really want to emphasize it's not about some bureaucratic admin thing or forcing one size fits all or I prefer to say one size fits nobody. It's about <laughs> your efficiency and effectiveness. It's it's about you can do your end to end support from strategy at the top all the way 
down a delivery and back again up. And and it has to be its own department with its own accountability notes, its own management meetings. Like any other department, you have to be able to look at it and say, this department, these are your objectives for the year. This is your budget. These are your KPIs, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide, please. Oh, yes, what's that? So where does business support fit into your organization? And this is an example scenario. So in this one, we say that business support reports into the COO, which is kind of logical. Many organizations, most of the PMO functions report into a CIO. Your corporate PMO, the highest level, might report into the CFO along with insurance and internal audit. It is what works right for the organization. We're not saying it's one or the other. We're just trying to give you an example here. So it is a service function. It does have objectives and targets. It is accountable for its own performance. It's also going to be accountable for making sure it checks other people's performance. And as business support grows, as the organization grows, evidently many, many departments will be screaming for help. And so it's going to have to, to manage that deployment and prioritization of who gets how much support, just like any other cross-functional department does at the moment. It could be finance. Oh, but I need another finance person on my program. Sorry, you can't have it. We don't have enough accountants. And it maintains the corporate governance agenda and cadence for the organization. This is what we were talking about before. It's that it's that cog. If you don't have effective governance, if you don't have effective reporting frequency, that's what we mean by cadence, it ain't going to work. So business support is an incredibly important cog for making this happen. Other people do the governance, business short, support makes sure that the governance activities happen. We cool? Yeah. So applying to Jackie. Uh, sorry, Alex. Hard. So, so um, what first? If, if you're oh, to come me again. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. So what is big all about? It's about having the right agendas we've talked about that the right people on your accountability nodes who've got the right information at the right time so if you have all those together you should get the right decisions i think we're going to click a button here sorry alex i'm multitasking <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so what, what we've just talked so Business support, make sure you should have the right people, the right agenda, the right information, the right time, and the right decisions come out. So business support enables the big framework, the big concepts to work. But without the big concepts of things like accountability nodes, common minimum agenda items for governance, it would be very difficult for business support to be effective. So the two of them are symbiotic, and that's cool and it works really well. So we're going to click a button, right. So good reasons for business support, efficiency savings. You can deploy your support resources where needed, as opposed to the fact that Fred and Mary have been in a particular department for years and they might not be doing very much at the moment, but there's no way that their boss wants Fred and Mary to leave and go and work for that horrible director who's who's a competitor for who's going to get the next promotion. So it's saying if we have business support people, it's an enterprise view. It's not a parochial. They're my people. I'm hanging on to them view. It's truly cross functional. We need the KPIs. Yeah. Are you hitting your service levels? Are you not? What's happening? A career path for support professionals, we covered this before. If if you've got this one cross-functional department, those support people can move from supporting, let's say, finance to engineering to projects and programs. You are developing their skills. It also means from an organizational point of view, you have far less risk 
that you only have one or two people who can do support for finance, et cetera, et cetera. You now have a huge body of people. You have far more contingency. Less wheel reinvention, less support borders, more good practice. We talked about assurance and to me, assurance is key. But if you don't have the right information, you don't have the easily accessible right information, how would you have the confidence to challenge sponsors and senior people who say, no, 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 the sky is bright purple with pink fluffy spots. And you're saying, well, I'm looking at this report and actually the, the sky is blue. That's what it's about. Oh, and it's me again. So top to toe support ensures strategic objectives. What we say at the top we need, they map to your portfolios. Go and make these changes. Portfolios say initiate program, programs, initiate projects. We get greater strategy attainment. This is a personal bugbear of mine that I think that actually strategic delivery in many organizations doesn't get as much of a crack of a whip as tactical delivery. Mm. So management teams are supported to, to plan and balance BAU products and change. And it's looking at them as a whole when you're and then apportioning the resources and the prioritization. In, in my experience, that doesn't happen. You have people tied to different departments. And even if some of them are underutilized, they never get passed across to other departments where they have a desperate need. Fast facilitated decisions, issue resolution, well, great visibility of issues and we hope resolution, and that leads to business agility. So we're saying if, if you have the information more quickly, you have the right information when you need it, then you can turn on the head of a pin. Next button, please, David. Now, we've shown you concepts of BIGs today, of BIG, and we've shown, and David showed you at the beginning the different components. So, what are the ingredients of BIG? What are the drivers that would make you want to implement, if not the whole concept of BIG, but the parts of it? Can we click again? So this one, so we see this respective framework and we've got business support in there. Do we need to say, right, big organization, sorry, large organization, you need to implement big across your whole, all of big, everything, the technology solution, the people, or do you have particular pain points? And you're saying this idea of the commonality of agendas, that would work really well for us. This idea of having one single business support department, because at the moment we have an issue with underutilization in one part of our business, not enough resource in another. Which bits do you want to add in first? Or is it just the concepts of OTCs and OTICs that you want to implement first? Please, can we click a button? The existing enablers, you've probably got most of that technology in place if you're a small to medium sized organization or bigger. It's all modern. It can all plug into the same data warehouse. That's the technology side of things. I don't believe there's any great point in just putting the technology in. If you're not doing the rest of the governance, it's just pointless. But if you do the governance side of things, you can still get quite a few steps further without having the clever technology to suck it all in, clean it and spit out the pertinent reports. Business engagement, process to deliver change. And I think there's a very clever little button we're going to press next. So we're saying these are the different ingredients of big for your organization. What's first in your mixing bowl? What do you think of all these different concepts you could easily and quickly put in? You could get buy-in to put them in that you think would make a decision, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a positive difference. Or are you saying, actually, we think we need all of it or none of it or something different? 
Deep Team is a consultancy that are you the chairman, David? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And they've been doing a number of big implementations for some very large clients. And they've come out with an ideas for starting here when you're thinking about big and how you implement and what you what might be pertinent for you to implement first in your organization or when it's pertinent to say, hey, let's go big bang. Well, have I covered the whole slide? That's Have covered. That's covered it? everything. That's absolutely tons of stuff. Um, what are, What are your drivers? Is it efficiency and effectiveness? Do you want to get the strategy to delivery? There's some material you can base it on. We need a sponsor. We've probably got the technology capabilities. We've got reference material around what support is, but we need business engagement, um, and uh, you need to start start carefully. I think that's the key message for this slide. And. Uh, that kind of um, pretty much um, wraps us up, really. Uh, I know we're at times skipping by, um, but uh, polls show us that PMOs are perceived as low value add. Uh, some of the stuff today came out and repeated that. Uh, the question here is, if you want to increase your value add, can you put the big message to your business and show a, a strategy delivery based service for your PMO um, can can um, make a better case for it? So that that's that's the uh, that's the pitch here, really. Instead of um, repeating the efficiency and effectiveness message, how, how about you go to you, you grab hold of that strategy to delivery opportunity and see if you can uh, you can help your business go forward there. I think that's pretty much it. Um, that, that's great, David. We just have one or two questions. I suppose there's a lot of questions about the products to support the technology, but I think you kind of answered that. And in, in terms of like that, we probably have in most organisations component parts. It's really about putting the data warehouse and the equivalent of a Power BI at the front of it. So it requires some thinking, basically, based on what you do. But I do think Michael has a good question, which says, have you proven exemplar business for this big concept? So I think you're probably asking, Michael, does it fit with one type of industry or another industry? industry is that what you mean is that a question to michael or to me yeah michael has said in the chat have you proven exemplar business for this big concept for many components of it but uh, would any would any would i go to anyone and say you need to implement big i'd say i would never do that <clears throat> um we, the, there are many organizations that have got some concepts uh and it, it this, they they many organizations would take elements of the of the big capability and apply it but but to to, uh, to to offer it like a, a a wrapped up method, you should go and adopt like a, like like um, like agile or, or something similar. No, we, we're not we're not pitching that. It's this is a toolbox that that you use to solve problems with, uh, as opposed to to try and transform how you do business with it. Is there any that have this concept in play already? Yes, the the. the, question, the yes. There, Absolutely. So the, the whole the whole strategy to delivery concept, there, there are over many years you, you've seen uh, OKR solutions, the ability to connect the strategic drivers down to projects and programs. The, uh, there are there are people putting together information into data warehouses. Uh, in the there are, there you might have seen the, um, uh, the there's a there's a data community for projects. That's another component. Um, the the uh, focus on accountability. That, that's 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 another key component people are taking on. We did a we did a, some some work for a government department here in the UK, which um, was to uh, look at uh, across a government portfolio and applied the accountability and governance concepts to that. Um, there's there's ton there's, there are tons of elements here you can that are already in use. So all we're doing is pulling them all together and mm -hmm. saying, look, consider this as a as a bag of bag of tools that you in, implement coherently not just uh, parochially apply them and, and don't have this all join up. And I think the key point, and you said at the outside, I think Alex said it, that, you know, like, you know, no no PMO is the same in any organisation because the organisation culture and where they are in their journey is different. And equally, some organisations will have great governance, but not great accountability or great accountability and not great, you know, tracking of stuff. So it's about understanding in the organisation what what is there in the big in the big model that is good right now and then where you connect the dots almost to try and make it better so what i love about it is is 
is the connection of strategy delivery to BAU and the rest of the organization. So they have that integrated view of how we're doing as a business, as opposed to almost the PMO sometimes being in that silo on its own, which is really not going to give the value long term. You'll get the value in the short term, but you won't get it long term. So having that wraparound for me is is really interesting. I think it's a really great framework to kind of take and look at. And as I said, some organizations will do parts, as you said, in the toolbox, great already, but they won't have quite connected how it all works, etc. It's exactly that, Jackie. I don't think, unless anyone can pick anything out, there is nothing new in any of these components. All we're saying is pull them together. Pull them together. Think think differently. That's all. Love your toolkit message better than the PM with a hammer where every problem is a nail. I love that. And um, there were a couple of things that were asked throughout the session in the chat. So we put three links in the chat for you. One was the YouTube channel that uh, Dave referred to. The second one was around um, the the praxis, the big governance where you can find it and the praxis framework. And the third one was the thought leadership from the PMI on the PMO maturity index. And it's just to kind of like, you know, reflect on that list a little bit as we are PMI, that that kind of thought leadership was brought out earlier this year, was done by PwC in conjunction with PMI globally across 230 organizations in the world. If you're interested in this space, it makes really interesting reading when you get into it, because actually it gives you the actual core pillars of what really makes successful PMOs a right at the value end of the organization in that 10% they talk about. And there aren't that many organizations that get into that 10%. But if you look at the, the research that has been produced, it gives you some really keen pointers about how to do that. So I think it's very valuable information. Is there any other questions from our chat? Anybody want to ask? Okay. Cleo, thank you. Anybody else before we wrap up? OK, Santosh, um, well, do you sure. want to do this bit or I do this bit or? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, thanks a lot, Jackie. And uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, for all the, the information that has been provided by David and Alex. Uh, it was really helpful and useful. Uh, team, uh, we are all coming to the end of the webinar today. Uh, thanks for your time um, and for joining the session. As you all know, you will get a PDUs for joining this uh, webinar. The PDU cl claim code is shown on the screen. Uh, if you have registered with your PMI ID, then uh, we will try to allocate the PDUs automatically to your account. Uh, if not, uh, you can still claim the code by yourself by uh, using the claim code that is shown on the screen. Probably you can make a note of the claim code. And uh, thanks a lot again for the, your time and you all have a wonderful evening. Bye now. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.